Hello, everybody. This is the jakepodcast.com. Jakepodcast.com. Dot com. What's going on? We're back with Little Red Riding Little Red Riding Hood or whatever you have over there. I like your you it's cold. It's gray. How did you even get Little Red Riding? Because hood? The, the who else wears a hood and rides does whatever Little Red Riding Hood. It's not Little. She doesn't Red. ride anything though. She walks. There was one book. Yeah, one book. She, she may. Walked. Yeah, but she may in later books had a horse. She may have just in that story the horse was I don't know taking a break. No, there was no horse ever. There was only a wolf. <laughs> That's what you say. Write a write a secondary book where she rides a horse to and fro. Now, if I go back and reread and there's like horses in there, I'm going to go, yeah, you're full of shit. No, and if you read and there's no horse, I'm going to be like, what crack were you on? I don't know. <laughs> well, I'm like 90. If I did know of Little Red Riding Hood, it was many years ago. You're so. not even 90. You're 101. That's right. That's good. All right. So we're in here chilling today. You know, we're on the content 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 right i'm still in search of my my everyday 100 percent co-host until then or if nobody shows up it'll probably be little gray riding hood across from me because she doesn't seem to be scared to get on the mic and she says weird random stuff which i'm sure something weird and bizarre and random will come out within minutes so but it's not random if it's on topic it's just it's an interesting question <laughs> i will give you i will give you credit when you threw out the you know when did you go into puberty and then it went into pubic hair and whatever all i need to be is like slightly directed if i can get directed for a second oh my god yeah who thought about that when does anyone think of you know and i have a really good memory so obviously i can go back and do a little regression thought process and remember the joy of oh my god look at me i'm a man i've got hair under my arms or whatever and then it's just been a constant drag from then you know from then on oh just a little i know you're a girl right you shave you shave your armpits everyone yeah? every girl should well i know some don't some That's try and very go disgusting some try and go a little bit earthy i mean unless they want a french braid then shit i give you credit <laughs> yeah i i mean it used to be a thing where i'd be creeped out but Right now, I'm not. I'm like, I really don't even, as long as you keep your arms down and whatever, I don't even know that you have armpits. So as long as they lift, so if they lift their arms up and you see that long hair. <laughs> it, would, it would be off-putting, but they, if they're hot enough, it would be fine. But as a guy, you know, manscaping, you know, we got a little, got into manscaping a little bit yesterday. But I remember like in my lifting, like bodybuilder, like trying to bodybuild and whatever. And I was like, ah, oh, armpits, right? Every, and I was just like over hair in general right if i'm shaving hair all over the place i just it dawned on me one day i was like ah let's shave my armpits dude the most horrible decision i've ever made my armpits were on fire irritated and felt like crap now i don't now know you know how every girl feels yeah i don't know why y'all i don't know why y'all do that it's because if we're shaved and bald we get laid <laughs> and it works because we're getting laid by it <laughs> and and yeah i'll 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 give you that <laughs> right, I shaved my head off of that. I just randomly got laid whenever I wanted. That would be a that would be a good you know it'd be a good play. But no, if you met Miss Columbia and she said, "Hey, I don't like bald guys," you would go bald in that second. Um, yeah, I don't know, Miss Columbia. I had a thing. You saw me on the you know on the laptop the other day. I really did. <laughs> and then um, today we were talking about the and with the gentleman who just left the um, Espera Christian. Esperalda. Spalding or whatever right she's like super musician she's doing creating a full album in 77 hours like with nothing just going in composing the music she plays like six different in instruments she's That's playing cool. dude it was really I don't know if you saw or you could hear the weird humming and everything coming from the laptop yeah. before you got here Sam and his brother we sat and they were hip. Like, dude, the brother the brother is totally different than Sam. No, 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 not but, at all. <laughs> no, but in a, like, just the conversation I had with him when he began to talk about music and this and, and different things, it, I have a way of getting a little deeper in conversation than, hey, what would you have for dinner last night, right? Yeah, nobody remembers. <laughs> well, as we sat and talked about whatever, the, the brother was – was pretty cool like you know we started talking about music and talking about this and he kind of went into a few a few intricacies and whatever and I was like holy crap I don't think I've ever had that conversation with Sam right you no know, Sam normally comes in angry and Sam wasn't nearly his weird angry self around his brother oh no just his regular everyday aggressive self yeah I don't know he wasn't towards me how is that possible because <laughs> I'm the because I'm the Jake Right. What, the hell? what is why would anyone have a reason to be aggressive to me? Right. I say hi to you when you come in. What do you need? I let you boss me around for a few minutes and then I sit back down. Right. I'm a nice dude. 
I'm not mean to Sam. We'll talk about random stuff, but yeah, he generally comes in in a bad mood. But he was in a very good mood with his brother, and his brother's kind of neat. Like no, I, his brother's a dick too. Yeah, I don't know. Well, no, it runs in the family because I asked him because I just looked over and saw him like, "Are you a dick like him?" He's like, "Uh, Sam's just in there. He's like, we're related." <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I. But they're different. Just take it from me, right? I'm a pretty good judge of character, and yeah, a little, a little bit different. But I like the brother. But I hip them to her, because number one, she's beautiful, right? And she's she's beautiful, light skin, you know, either mixed or like light skin or whatever. Dude, she's beautiful. I like the talent. She's super smart, right? Anyone who can manipulate like five or six different instruments or whatever, that's yeah. I don't know if you've yeah. ever tried to play a guitar piano any of those just imagine knowing all of them and being proficient at all of them it's awesome so if I anyone played every instrument and the only thing i can make is noise yeah well <laughs> yeah i mean sometimes it could be weird interpretive music where it's you know it's different no no just straight up noise. straight up noise <laughs> I can see that <laughs> probably because I would do the same right I learned to play like rhythm guitar once and it was really difficult like my fingers and my hands didn't it wasn't meant for me to do that and I tried really hard and then I kind of got over it so you're admitting you're bad with your hands um when it comes to playing instruments yes outside of that you're uh, bad with your hands no outside of that the, the hands do what they need to do <laughs> Let's not even talk about who's good with their hands and not, right? Because my <laughs> hands seem to be able to get things done. <laughs> Don't know necessarily about about your side. Um, <laughs> but if you do get a chance, check out. And I know I'm probably like you know killing the the name, right? Esperalda Spalding or whatever. But if you do, you should click on click on that thing and watch some of it. It's it's interesting at best. Just watching somebody go through the creative process. And if I could like get within 10 feet of her i would throw out a marriage proposal like i would you would actually get on the knee <laughs> dude i have knee both knees i would lay flat on my back like she's she's got that super awesome quality that is it's just weird it's like the goodness like super good and sweet i don't think she's ever said like a mean thing the first time i saw her is when she uh she performed in front of uh president barack obama and michelle obama and whatever and in a group of you know, whatever, high, cool, neat people, I guess, you know, a bunch of, you know, super important people. But just to see that and the performance she put on, and that's what I saw at once, and I was like, who is this person? And I was like, doggone, is she pretty? And whatever, so it was neat. But I, I've got a couple I got a couple questions for you. Do you use Twitter? Or have you used Twitter? Yes. Okay. What in the world, like – it's because of social media for the podcast and for, you know, the vapor shops and for other stuff. I've used it, but I've never found it to be useful, useful. Like people say, like, it'll be a one. It's, it, it sounds like a whole bunch of yous on there. Nah, when I was 13, I peed on a squirrel and I'm an adult now. So I pee on other things or whatever. And I'm just like, what in the fuck did that mean? Like everything's cryptic and weird. Like, look, I'll go through and I kind of wanted to do this because or people just it's like throwing out sentences it's like everyone's got like some kind of bizarre form of Tourette's <laughs> and it's it's really odd or just the people that are on my Twitter feed I guess like Elon Musk right he says some good stuff he's the the gentleman who's going to revolutionize you know everything <laughs> but um just normal people um this random chick stop ignoring early signs of someone in your life being toxic it only gets worse right so a little soap bop soapbox philosophy so that one's that one's good um but let me see it just and of course do people okay mm. like <laughs> no I, again then i've gotta then i've gotta read and whatever but you know this chick used one of those um those things that you put on your nose and then you peel it off and it takes off all the blackheads and she's like, when you know, it's weird when you take off um, when you take off a boar strip from your nose and you're mesmerized by the blackheads, but also disgusted with yourself. And you know, people just say weird things, and I'm like, why am I looking at this? Um, I don't care. I'm fake. You know, N word, chase me. You know, who trying to kick it? Like, just w does anyone reply to that? Like, shit, I'm trying to kick it. What are you doing? Like, you know what I mean? Like, what in the world is, what is happening with people? No, if it's a girl that's at it, and then a guy sees how hot the girl is, they'll be like, hell yeah, let's kick it right now. Well, yeah, but <laughs> but odds are, in, in Twitter land, 
the odds that you're in the same city, town, or whatever are far and few between, right? Everyone on Twitter seems to be all over the place, right? Twitter is, like, to me, even before I got it, because I kept telling my friend Michelle, I was like, Twitter is very stupid. I don't get it. But after getting on it, I'm looking at them, like, oh, these people are either bitching about their problems or, like, just saying something extremely random, which has nothing to do with anything going on in life. But... After just looking at them, just like, oh, Twitter, it's basically freedom of speech. You get to say what you want, and nobody will judge you. Well, they'll judge, but they won't say anything about it. And not a whole lot of people are responding back or whatever, right? You just kind of scroll through and go, uh, you know, and look, I get the funny memes or the, you know, the the video memes or the gifs or whatever the frick those things are called or whatever. <laughs> They'd be like, bitch, this me out of the shower and me every time I hear, you know, and then you got somebody dancing around, you know, stupidly or whatever, right? Like, haha, that's you out of the shower. Uh, thank you. Like, I'm glad to know you do weird shit when you get out of the shower. But it's not you. It's a, you know, it's a little video of something else. Um, uh, I love these hoes, but I don't want them. Thanks, Mr. Fresh Guy. You know, like, like what like what were you doing in your life where you were sitting around and be like, man, I'm bored. I'm gonna, you know what? I love them hoes, but they don't want I don't want them. Cool. I can go about my day now. Like, I needed to get that out into the universe. Like... <laughs> I seriously, I, I'm trying to find like a reason, you know, other than, you know, and I, I refuse to follow Donald Trump. I say no to that. Um, you know, where's did you go- follow Barack Obama? Nope. <laughs> Cause he was on like regular TV and whatever. Right. And I, I don't understand Twitter to begin with. So, um, yeah, if she really loves you, she's going to act like your woman and your mom at the same time. Thanks. Okay. Chris, thanks for that. No, it sounds like, you know, you have an overbearing chick who really wants to be way too in your business. You've got a ma. You don't need a ma, right? Maybe your ma needs, you know. Unless he likes moms. Unless you do. Like something, no, and there's, there's reasons. I've, I've got a couple friends that, uh, that date, um, that date women who are a lot like their mom. Like they had a super mean mom who, you know, was, and then they go and they marry someone and then they bitch about their wife. And I'm like, dude, are you serious? You married your mother. And that's in psychology, you know, you'll find that, um, yeah. That the person you want is really someone that's like your parents in a way. Well, and, and you'll find that very Freudian and whatever, you know, and you'll find, because think about it, the only person that, you know, you learn a lot of stuff in school or you watch TV or whatever, but the, the, the values of interpersonal male, female relationships, you learn from watching mom and dad. Sure. That's why all y'all want to get married, right? Because hell no, why, divorce is the way to go. <laughs> well, but why? But why would everyone, you know, be so indoctrinated into wanting to get married? Because that's what you saw. Mom and dad were married, right? So your thing is, I want to get up and get married. Now, if your dad's a drunk and beats the crap out of whatever, you're going to go out. Not a hundred percent. It's that eighty-five fifteen rule. There's a higher, per, you know, potentiality that you're going to go out and find someone who drinks and does whatever. Then the fifteen percent sometimes will like, no, I won't date anyone who drinks, but he's still abusive, right? Because that's what they equate to love. Well, that's got to be love. Mom and dad were married and together. That's my mommy and daddy. So dad, you know, gets angry and smacks people around. So it's really trippy, and that's why I think having kids, dude, is the devil. Because I would have screwed mine up for sure. What? I thought your kids Scoob were was probably out. Scoob was probably normal until now. I'm the one who made him crazy. Scoob who knows? Is normal. Yeah. See. Well, he Not maybe he even. was. <laughs> yeah, and like this dude, when you when you're on your fifth wing and you got twenty to go, like you stopped eating at your fifth wing to tweet that out. I just don't understand the the need the need for just the randomness. You know, somebody just honestly, and that's it. Right. People on your Twitter feed supposed to know like, oh, man, he said, honestly, oh, making sweet love. Be right back. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. Just dude, it's it's the most bizarre. And this isn't even as weird. Um, This isn't even as weird as it normally gets. Like, I wish I should have saved. I think I did save some, <laughs> but I'm not going to look. But uh, <laughs> like this dude's like talking about a Slurpee. <laughs> You know, bro, Abraham Lincoln never experienced a Slurpee. That man probably thought tea was the best as it ever got. So sad. So I just don't know what's going on. Like, the the people are vomiting this weird stuff. So I don't know. Um, If anything, I do. I obviously follow hot chicks, right? I like hot chicks. Of course. So you look and you go, oh, if they put up a, a bunch of content. But if you're a hot chick and you've only got, like, three photos on Instagram, what are you doing? Why? You're a hot chick. 
put hot chick photos up or I'm not going to. She's gonna, got a boyfriend. I don't give a fuck what she got. <laughs> you live your separate life on, on what you call it, man. Just don't give them your Instagram deal. <laughs> you sh- but usually that's why girls stop posting their stuff on Instagram because they would put like on their caption like in love or got a boyfriend and you see them not post anything like or if they post something, they'll post something with their boyfriend or at least a decent photo than what they would usually post. Yeah. Less with more clothes on or whatever. I know. Isn't that depressing? Uh, <laughs> well, it's whatever. I mean, it's not like I go there for it, but it does make me happy when I see like, you it know. It makes you want to come on something. Uh, not, not from that. Like, dude, I've got a friend who like Instagram and Twitter like really lights him up. Like, oh, man. I'm like, what is wrong with you? I was like, dude, maybe I'm desensitized. Like, I need a whole lot more like i need full-fledged porn or whatever i can't look at instagram photos or whatever i mean i'll look and be like wow that's a cool chick when i look at it but see i'm i either like to say i'm smarter than most or i at least think a little bit deeper than most right when i look at those things i look and i go wow man i wonder who that chick is and i'll look at the pictures and where is she at damn she's at the club a lot this bitch all <laughs> she do is go to the club and I'll look and be like, this one was from 16 hours ago. This one was from 20, you know, 27 hours ago. I'm like, damn it, that was a Tuesday. Like, you'd be at the club on a Tuesday. I know they made a song about it and shit, but, you know, I'm like, damn. Or, you know, super fitness chick. And I'm like, oh, wow, she looks good. But, damn, that's all that bitch does is work out. Like, seriously. You, every day she posts three times. I'm like, do you have a job? Like, <laughs> I get it. Like, you're in great shape, but how do you work out for, like, 12 hours a day? Like, what, you've got to sleep a few. I don't know. If you got money, then you're allowed to do that. <laughs> yeah, but, I mean, being in good shape is whatever, but but lifting and working out and being in good shape can be an addiction, right? And people will just do it all day. And that's great. You're in great shape or whatever, but you also can't eat this and you can't do whatever. And, hey, you want to go out and do something? Oh, sorry, I got to go to my third time at the gym, you know. Get a hold of me after 11 and, you know, I'll drink a protein shake and then uh, the talk to you while I fall asleep. Like, damn, um, you don't sound like you're fun to be around. Okay, I've got a um, another thing like Twitter. Okay, I just had to get that off my chest. I've been wanting to talk to somebody about Twitter <laughs> because, like, we do it for business. So it wasn't until this because I post all the you know the podcast directly from YouTube to Facebook to the you know to the Facebook page and then to Twitter also. And I'm like, why am I even posting on Twitter? I'm like, unless I just go nah, blue sky and donuts maybe people would read my stuff then i don't know but it hurts my brain like i don't understand what twitter's function is and how it makes money and how it does anything because there's no like communication or anything of substance like you know it's just it's bizarre no twitter was super popular when i was in eighth grade but then it died down like throughout high school and then like once i was like a senior it got super hyped up i'm wondering like what happened? It's still the same thing. <laughs> yeah, it's it's weird. It seems it seems like damn. No, that's the same thing that happened with Facebook. Well, Facebook, at least Facebook, it changed genres, right? Because Facebook when it was college based, right? It was, you know, that's when and how it, you know, came about, right? It was for college Facebooks, right? And then as it as it kind of morphed, then, you know, the younger generation got it. I still remember when I was when I was forced to get a Facebook. I came, I came into town, I was in Texas, and I came into town for, what is it, a good friend of mine, is, uh, uh, his dad had passed away, right? So I was like, you know what, I'll be there for him, or whatever, dude, I was friends with his dad. So like, you know what, let me, let me fly into town. So I flew into town, and his dad knew a lot of his friends, and this was a very popular guy. So I was around a bunch of people. So, you know, you're at the funeral, and after, you, know, you go through the whole process. And when we're at the funeral home, a bunch of people are like, hey, what's going on, man? Uh, dude, do you have Facebook? I'm like, no, I'm an adult, right? I work a lot, whatever. Dude, you need to get Facebook. You need to get Facebook. Dude, everyone, I'm at a funeral, and I was told like <laughs> 25 times, well, dude, give me your, uh, are you on Facebook? And I'm like, dude, what is going on with this goddamn Facebook, right? Like, I was working like 12 hours a day and busting my hump every day. You know, MySpace still existed, but nobody really used it, right? So, When Facebook came, you know, if I didn't have a business or have something like, why am I going to use it for a personal, you know, it was only like once, once or twice a year, I'd go, man, whatever happened to that dude from high school and try and look him up or try and do whatever, you know, and be like, dude, I wonder what ever happened to so-and-so or whatever. And it obviously it's a great use of Facebook now because we could be sitting and be like, dude, I wonder if, you know, 
so and so and we just get on there and find oh look at okay that's why we haven't and seen now him. you know how stalkers exist yeah oh no dude you can <laughs> stalk away on facebook <laughs> Dude, if I'm sitting in here and I'm like, damn, you know, that's so-and-so, I'm like, man, that, you know, or if I look around and be like, dude, and you can learn a lot from somebody's Facebook, right? You look at them and be like, damn, what do they do? Are they single? Are they not? And whatever. I mean, the whole reason why it was put together. But yeah, you know, think about it. You you randomly, you, you're at a bar or something and cute waitress and you're like, oh, well, if you're friends with everybody at the bar and everybody, you know, that works there, and then obviously she's she posts on the bars thing and be like, okay, that's her name. Click. Does she have a boyfriend? Does she not? Um, does she do whatever? And then, you know, you find out she's a weird religious Jesus freak and be like, yep. Okay, cool. No need to get to know her any better. <laughs> right. She believes in magic people in clouds. So I don't know. It's good. It's a good way to get some, some initial, you know, information about someone. <laughs> yeah. The creepy way. What other way? What are you talking about? <laughs> Dude, you creep on everybody in the That is a lie. If I think they're hot, yeah, I'm going to say they're hot. Like what you like what are you going to do? <laughs> you technically think everyone's hot. That is a lie. You, I changed my type up a lot. No. You've chased around like 38 people inside of this that I've <laughs> seen and I've heard about another like 20 more. <laughs> The seven foot tall guy. Oh my okay, god. Okay, he is hot and tall and seven foot. I'm just curious. Can he touch the ceiling if he jumps? I think he could just put his hands up. He had to duck god walking damn. in the walking in the door behind you, he had to duck. Oh yeah, I saw that. I'm just like, how tall is this dude? Yeah, but you do that and then skinny little white kid that nobody like you know any number of people that you're like, oh, bro. and I'm just like, oh, my God, dude. Is it, is it like a time of day? Like, if you see somebody at 545, they're hot? No, when you're horny, like, really, really, really horny, you don't get that drive. Like, okay, I quit. Whatever walks through the door will do. Yeah. But you don't put, but you don't pull the trigger. You say a lot and you, you do whatever and you talk about them after they leave. You did like a year and a half ago. You were really, really good with the open. You were like, hey, hey, what's going on? Do you have a phone number? Let me get your phone number. Who are you? Blah. And I'm like, oh, my God, dude. She just randomly, like, you didn't ask yeah, if they had care. somebody or whatever. <laughs> so I, I like the opening. But, yeah, and I guess when you're just randomly meeting people in, pa- you know, in passing, uh, what are the odds you're going to see them again, right? Exactly. So, That's the fun part. Yeah, throw it out there. It takes me longer to, to figure it out. Why? Because, like, I'll look and I'll be like, oh, dude, that's cool. That's whatever. But then you go into the, okay, does she have a boyfriend? Does she not? Whatever. Now, here, if I'm working, I can't really just hit on people when that's they come the in, right? That's about you. <laughs> so I can't really do whatever. But, of course, I'm going to give good customer service. And I have dated a couple girls that have come into the, you know, into the retail location. But it's after getting to know them for a while, right? Like, they come in and, hey, how are you doing today? What, you know, what's going on? Blah, blah, so blah. So disappointed. You know. What are you going to do? So, I mean, after you get to know them, it's just like knowing them somewhere else. And then if you get to be friendly with them and now they stop in and they talk a lot and they do whatever and find out you know someone that they know and bah, friends and, you know, it just kind of it works. I mean, granted, it's only been a couple. Two. <laughs> it's only been two. But that's the thing I don't understand. People are just like, I want to sleep with that person, but they have to go through the whole process. Like, OK, I got to take them on a date. But why go through that whole process? Like, skip to the point. Like, you want to, like, you want to fuck? Go fuck. Nobody is stopping you. Like, we don't even have to see each other again. We don't have to talk ever again. If we see each other again, we're we could be perfect strangers. We don't even have to act like we knew each other. And that's good. But the weird thing is, most females don't think that way. Or if they do, if they do, they won't say it. Like, if you get to know them a little while, then they'll go ahead and tell you what the deal is. But not on first, thing. not on first meeting. Very rarely. You know, and you you kind of brought it up to me. You were like, oh, my God, you like live your life out and do whatever. I was like, I don't care anymore. I don't care. This is who I am. And but I'm not 100 percent in anything like, yes, I'm extremely sexually driven, but it comes in waves. Right. Like I'll be just like, I need to do whatever, something I'll leave here and I'll go out and I'll stay out really late and end up, you know, hanging out with somebody and getting very little sleep and then coming in. But after you do that for a while. I mean, it's good. It's meeting an, you know, an, an immediate need. But I'm like, ah, fuck my life. Like, dude, I'm tired. I'm getting no sleep. Like, nah, I, I, I just as soon have somebody I'm cool with and I can kick it with. And it doesn't have to be super relationshipy either. It can be, like, cool. Friends with benefits. Yeah. And to be like, hey, what's going on? What are you doing? Whatever, blah, blah, blah. And, hey, look, we got to up this. Like, what's your schedule look like? Because we, <laughs> we need to do this on... You know, Monday, Wednesday, <laughs> Friday, right? We'll take a break in between. And it, look, if you're not doing anything on Tuesday and Thursday, swing by and we can knock that out or whatever. 
but either that or a real relationship. But it, after a while, the going out and the staying out late and doing whatever, it just he gets bored. It, it does. Well, after you've done it like 30 times, right? If you've messed with like 30 different people or 30 random times that you've done this, and all you wanted to do that night was go like, dude, I'm man, I'm tired. I want to go home and whatever. Girl calls. Hey, what are you doing? Let's go out and have drinks. <laughs> yeah, this is good. You only live once, right? Fucking YOLO, bitch. And, you know, <laughs> go go out and do something. Then cool. But now you're you're having sex at 4, 35 o'clock in the morning. You're hungover. You feel like crap. You've got to be up at 9 o'clock. You've got other shit to do because you're an adult, right? you got to mow your grass. you got to go, you know, go to work, do whatever, like. I don't work at, you know, I don't work from seven until two in the morning and I don't have to work again until seven o'clock at night. Like I've got shit to do, but I also want the shenanigans. So it really took like spring and summer and now I'm kind of over it. Like it's like, Hey, come, come hang out and let's no. Why don't you just call me tomorrow? Or you know what, dude, I'll bring you breakfast here. Here's an egg McMuffin. Move over. I'm climbing into bed. Right. (laughs) Like, I'll do that shit in the morning when I'm fucking fresh and had a cup of coffee and I'm good to go. But why the hell am I going to stay out all night and whatever? So it's, I don't know, it's weird. I'm I, Just like your random, uh, you know, changing, you know, this and this and you change your type and whatever. My type is always the same, right? I'm like Captain Kirk. I like all women. <laughs> I can find an endearing quality and whatever. I really like cool chicks as long as they're cool. And then, you know, it's whatever. You just, you know, you and your skinny, like, skinny, nerdy white boy <laughs> fetish, dude. Uh, I swear, that is a complete accident. I don't know how that happened. And I would have never noticed it if you and Michelle and so many other people pointed that out to me. I'm like, that is not true. I know it's not true. You'll be, sit- <laughs> you'll be sitting here on your phone and you're like, DTD, and let a 135-pound kid walk in with a shirt just falling off of him, like, whatever. And he's kind of, and I look at him and I'm like, oh, maybe one day you'll grow up, fella. And your <laughs> eyes get big and you're like, oh, who is this? And I'm like, oh my God. And you're like, oh my God, he's so hot. And I'm like, he looks like he's 11. His name was Jake. I remember that dude too. <laughs> yeah. Well, dude, you've done it with so many. And some of them, I'll give it to you. They're good looking dudes, right? They're, uh, you know, chill, good looking dudes, whatever. I'm like, go right ahead. But yeah, they, um, yeah, they. That's the great thing about act- about being 19. <laughs> that is the amazing thing about being 19 because I am allowed to do that. That's why I don't want a boyfriend or want anything to do with that because if I did have that, I would get bored so fast. I can't do that. Or you have to have a really, 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 really good like four times a day sex drive. <laughs> Or more. <laughs> yeah, but see, the weird thing is, even when you're single, you're not get, you're not satiating the four times a day, regardless, right? You're going, you know, day or multiple day in between or whatever. So because you got me thinking about what you said when you were like, you got to figure yourself out. I'm like, of course, I don't want to. <laughs> I can get a guy to do that for me. Yeah, well, you. But how has that worked out for you? I get pissed off exactly. real quick. <laughs> exactly. Because and and it's weird. We've we've had you know obviously the show is very you know sex dating relationships and we've had the talk and you know I was even told by you know I was told by the first time I'd messed around with an older woman and she kind of like hit me to a lot of information and when we did you know I I did the I did the like asked her afterwards like hey you know how was that like you know was it good for you and whatever and she looked at me and she was like oh sweetie she was like you you really think that you have to ask? And I went, well, I don't know. Was, you know, was I good? I, I, the Lord knows I put in some effort. And she was like, sweetie, you'll know if you, if you got me to where you got me. And you did. And she was like, but you notice I directed you and was like, hmm, here, do this and do that and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, yeah, no, that was really fucking hot that you took control in a couple, you know, in a couple points of this to tell me like, do this or do it longer or no, 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 I'm good. And I'll do this. And you know, eh, it was cool. It wasn't a whole lot of words expressed, but she, she was very guiding in whatever, right? She knew what she needed me to do to her to get her to that point. And then, you know, as we had messed around a few times and it wasn't like a long relationship, I think we had only messed around, I don't know, for like maybe three months, you know, and she was like two years. No, no, no. It was only like, it was three months. It was over summer. It was in, uh, in college. I went to Texas when I broken up with a long-term girlfriend and I went there and this, this was a really hot older woman. And I got lucky because I'd met her randomly. I think she probably seduced me because I don't think I had the balls to, (laughs) 
You know what I mean? All I knew is she was hot, and I was, like, super nice, and I'm probably looking at her, like, goo-goo eyes, like, whoa. And she was, like, you know, we had some drinks. There was an event, and crazy stuff happened. And I think she took it as uh, she was going to mess with me long enough to teach me some things and whatever, and then pat me on the butt and send me, you know, send me on my way. But one thing, you know, she was like, look, she goes, you'll notice the difference when you're messing with a woman or a girl. A girl, she'll be down to do X, Y, and Z, but a woman – a woman knows exactly, you know, what she needs to do. And she's not going to just have sex for no apparent reason, right? <laughs> if she's doing it and you don't, you know, you don't get the job taken care of, and it's not your fault, right? But a woman ha- has learned herself enough to tell you or direct you to get the job done. And she, you know, she's the one who told me, she was like, look, look this up. You know, there's a high amount of females that never achieve an orgasm through sexual intercourse. And then there's a bunch that that can, but only during, you know, oral versus penetration and this. And she was like, look, a girl needs to, you know, through manual stimulation by herself, figure out where and how. And and a lot of it is in your head. And when you're feeling a certain way and you're getting there, a lot of it is mental and some of it's physical. And she walked me through the whole process. And it's kind of weird that I know more about the female orgasm than you do. And, you know, and the, you know, and the G spot. It, it's, it's like, it's so funny. Because I told you, you know, I'd messed with a girl a while ago. And she was like, oh, my God. And granted, this is when trying to have sex. And it's like, you know, 5 o'clock in the morning. And you've been up for like 14 hours. And you're drunk. And, dude, I'm lucky if I can even, you know. Walk. Yeah. Let alone do this. <laughs> But in lieu of it, I always default to I want to make sure they're going to have a good time. So regardless of how rumble stumble, I barely make it through a sexual, you know, encounter. And this is kind of why I quit doing it. I was like, dude, this is stupid. <laughs> like, I'm so much better than this. I'm like, you let me like, at, you know, 1245 in the afternoon after coffee and a light <laughs> breakfast. Like, dude, I will change the world with some sex. <laughs> right? Like, I, I can do wonders. But, dude, you know, you're up for 14 hours. You've been drinking for seven you know, you do whatever, like who in the right mind would even try? Like, I'm lucky if I can pee, right? Like I can't even pee correctly. I'm missing the toilet. Just didn't, man, I'm trying to do something with. Doesn't it burn? <laughs> <coughs> no. Why would it burn? I don't know. I always assume like when a guy is really hard and it's like, if they wake up in the morning and they're just super solid and they know they got to come and like, you realize, oh, I got to use the bathroom. And then they try to pee that pushing past the cum and everything it will burn no it's different little <laughs> valves and whatever in there that the you know your urethra you know here and this and yeah as long as it's not stimulated and forced to be open if not you would <laughs> come all over your toilet instead of pee like it's creepy but no generally the pee you know the burning when you pee i think is set for when you have an std right that's a bad sign that means whatever you did a day or two ago or a week ago, that <laughs> wasn't as good as you thought it was. God damn. But, yeah. No, it's just weird. It's just you have to wait sometimes because you can't pee when it's 100%. You've got to wait until it kind of goes down to like a 45-degree angle or whatever, and it gets to that angle, and you can bend over a little bit. And that's where I – that's another reason when I use the pee into the, into the bathtub because it's impossible you pee all over your toilet seat. It's not good. Bad accuracy. Your aim sucks. When you have wood and you're, if not, you'd pee and hit the ceiling or at least, you know, I don't know, like whatever. You'd pee on the wall or something. So, so you yeah. can't hit your target. When it's down normal. Yeah. It's perfect. You can do whatever. <laughs> You've heard the pee. You've been yes, forced to hear the pee. you're loud as hell. And I'm yes. just like, what is wrong with you? And that's from a room. What? There's got to be like 25, 30 feet or, you know. At least. Yeah, it's it's a good distance, but no, yeah. I walked all the way over here once, and I'm just like, how is he still this loud? Like, what are you doing there? Well, this is a loud echo chamber of a whatever, but I don't know. I mean, it's a bunch of water coming out at a rapid rate of speed. <laughs> you know, one thing that freaks me out about peeing, I didn't realize. Like, I thought, I thought, um, and no, there is a little credence to this because I do pee more. I was in Texas and in the beverage business, right? It's not the most glamorous business of all. And especially when you're in beverage distribution and you're working with one of your salespeople and you've got a box truck and, you know, you've got to carry a certain amount of new product, right? So if you go in and you talk the store owner into taking your new product, you have to have it on, you know, because you, we found out that if you talk them into taking it and then you, you set delivery for a couple <laughs> days, for a couple days later, they go to deliver this and it'll be a different person in the store. The guy may have changed his mind. So when you're selling, you've got to have the product on you. 
so I'm out working with one of my sales guys and, uh, and he was like, Hey man, uh, he was like, uh, man, we're going to the hood. So, you know, nobody has functional bathrooms in the hood. Right. So he was like, dude, um, save a couple of those glass bottles, you know, in case you got to pee. And I went, that is a 12 ounce bottle. Like, you know, like an Everfresh bottle or whatever, or like yeah. a Welch's. And he was like, yeah, save those to pee in. And I went, dude, I will pee in that and then pee all over the floor. Like, dude, I pee more than that. And he was like, bullshit, you don't pee more than that. And I was like, I guarantee you I pee more than that. I've driven, like, cross country on multiple occasions, dude. I can fill up, like, your bottle. Like, that's about, like, I pee about one liter. What the hell? And sometimes it'll be, boy, it's touch and go. Like, you know the 32-ounce, like, cups from Speedway? Yeah. Or, like, a biggie biggie drink from whatever i can i can almost get that right to the top what the so yeah i pee a lot so maybe there's a reason why you know whatever i, I produce a lot of pee to be fair you do drink a lot so. i do i do drink a lot of fluid right so he we were we were running around through you know whatever and he was like dude i gotta i gotta pee whatever man watch the back door you know on the truck so he's in there you know with the beverages and he's peeing in the back of the you know back of the truck and he comes out with the fucking thing, and there's like that much room, and it's tw- and I was like, you peed like ten ounces? I'm like, you gotta be shitting me, dude! Like, I'm looking in the truck now to see if there's like pee on the floor. Did you just miss? Like, and he was like, dude, bullshit. There's no way, whatever. So the next day, we're in the truck, and I was like, hey man, pull over at the gas station. I gotta pee. And he was like, he was like, yeah, one of those super long peas or whatever. And I went, I grabbed one of those bottles, and I went into the gas station. It was like super nice gas station too, so I felt like a creep. I walk mm-hmm. in with an empty glass bottle, so I went and boom, I'm, I'm instead of peeing in the urinal, I'm peeing in this thing. I peed and filled it up, and then sat and peed for like an extra like it seemed like an eternity. So I come back out, I put it in my pocket, and I'm like dee 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 dee, and I walk out and I went. Whoosh. I was like, dude, and I peed for like an extra. Or I did something. Or either I videotaped it or something. I I did Just something to give proof. Videotaped yourself. <laughs> I, I I didn't like the argument. He argued. He argued a lot. Yeah, yeah. It's a creepy move. But he was like, dude, there's no way. How in the man? What the hell's wrong with you? So, and and for some reason, peeing seems to be longer. Like when I go back there and I pee, and I'm like, oh my god, dude, this was like. Dude, what did I pee for? Like a minute and a half You're or whatever? In there for like five. I'm like, what are you doing? No, you it's have not to that. be on your phone. No, you were literally in there for like five. Unless well, a today, customer walks in, you come out really fast. But if there's no customers, you're in there for like five minutes. I'm thinking, what are you doing? Well, you got to shake properly and whatever. So, I mean, you don't want to come out and have, have a pee mark on your. I assumed you were just having a diarrhea episode, but no. Well, no, you're just today. Like, I peed. No, today I did whatever, but. No. <laughs> um, my. Uh, but I didn't realize it until, like, I put something in the microwave. Like, I normally, like, if I'm going to reheat coffee in the morning instead of, like, brewing, I, I had leftover. So I'm like, cool. I put it in there. I click one minute, right? Because one minute in a big cup makes it about perfect, whatever. So I hit the button. I'm like, oh, shit, I got to pee. So I go in the bathroom, and I pee. And I'm like, Phew. I'm like, man, hurry up, man. I really want to get that cup of coffee. And I'm sitting there, and I'm sitting there, and it didn't dawn on me. I was like, the microwave didn't ding, right? There was no ding on the microwave. And I went, Rrr. So I shake off and do whatever, walk back in. There was still like 32 minutes. I was like, that was our 32 minutes, 32 seconds. I'm like, oh, dude, when you're peeing, there's a time continuum like thing. It seemed like I was in there for like two minutes. Like, when are you going to stop? Like, it just keeps going. But it's only like 30, like 35 seconds of actual peeing. Time okay. yourself the next time you pee. No, that's weird. <laughs> you, with all, you said you peed on a squirrel as a child. Okay, for one, I'm a child. You could pee on anything. You could pee on a dog if you want to. Who's going to really stop you? You're a kid. <laughs> somebody ought to have their eye on you, and if you're running around peeing on animals, somebody... My parents sh- don't care. You see, I'm in here. <laughs> yeah, I know. It, it, somehow I I get joint custody or whatever. I this is swear. horrible. My dad just like, he's like, why are you willing to go over there and spend time with them? Why don't you want to spend time with me? <laughs> because you're you. <laughs> like, you're such a weirdo. Well, you you really jumped the shark on that to go somewhere to not find it. you got to admit, the people that come in this place are, are an weirdos. odd bunch. Like a super odd bunch. Yeah, I know. And I'm just like, wow, wow. And I'm not a normal dude. I'm a weird individual, whatever. But I at least hold it together, right? I can turn it on and be like, hey, what's going on? How are you? Right? You know how to be professional. Right. Least. Be professional. I mean, I'm a creep and I'm everything else, but you just got to hold it together during <laughs> the times when you have to. But I yeah. can't even do that at work. I just don't care. 
Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know. I kind of have to. I, I, but I was raised a certain way, right? Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. Like I had to tell um, Sam's brother not to cuss in front of a woman who was in here. There was a woman, and he f bomb oh, and yeah. shit. And, and I looked over and I was like, "Yo!" I was like, "Dude, in what world is that okay?" Like, and part of it is the is the area. We're a very blue collar area, and you know, you yeah. work in a factory in a shop. You shop talk, right? You cuss quite a bit you know in describing anything but that's more like common sense because usually when a customer is in here you notice like even though we're all talking we don't curse at all we literally like stop cursing yeah because i i will yell at people and whatever i don't care if that freaks people out i'm just like look and and if the woman's like oh it's fine i you know i'm a truck driver and whatever (laughs) okay that's fine but you know i would prefer that it wouldn't happen right i don't like people cussing and talking certain ways around my mom or my sister you know what I mean? Like, yeah. dude, there's ladies presence. Behave yourself. Even if I slip on occasion, like, because you're, you're sitting around and you're talking to mom and sis. You and I'm so like, oh, blah, blah. And then I say something. I'm like, oh, my bad. I was like, I apologize. Oh, you're fine. I was like, no, ma'am. You know, maybe I don't say the customer. Like, because if even though she, even if she said, like, she's fine with it, what if another customer is in here and they're like, what, what kind of fuck? place is this? Yeah, like, <laughs> like you guys what, are. You just let people come in here and cuss all day. <laughs> like, yeah, it's weird. I don't, I don't like it. In, in a perfect world, like we haven't cussed a whole lot during this one, right? And you noticed it, uh, old buddy, that kind of semi ruined the podcast from last night. Alex. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Whatever. <laughs> He's your son. <laughs> <laughs> no. I mean, don't get me wrong. There's a possibility the time frame is about right, but, <laughs> but what are you gonna do? But, uh, you know, it, he was like, well, I didn't use any cuss words because I noticed you weren't. So sometimes, like, societally, if if enough people just don't, right, maybe other people will stop. And, oh, yeah. you know, at least in here, I just, I don't know. I don't feel the need. If I'm telling a story and I'm I'm being funny and cheeky and whatever, then, yeah, I'll, you know, drop some F-bombs and whatever. But <laughs> something something weird. As soon as I put the headphones on, because, look, I already know the levels are good, so I could totally take the headphones off. There's something about from when I did radio that this was kind of that last. It's kind of like if you play football, you put your helmet on and put on your chin strap. When you put these on, there's a certain thing that that goes from when you did radio, because when you do live radio, like I was expressing to you all yesterday, you don't get a chance to edit like, oh, just take that out. Right. The best we had was a dump button. If somebody, you know, dropped an F-bomb and normally it was when callers were calling into the show, if they called in. Oh, hey, woo, and you hit, and it'll go back five seconds and erase whatever, right? And it'll just be dead air. So you can you can use a dump button, but we don't have the, the luxury of a dump button. It'd be interesting if I could find a way to incorporate it in because then I wouldn't have to worry about editing out. Just go to a dollar store and buy a button and it says dump. <laughs> You know what? That would be that would be awesome. In this magical world, hopefully that would happen. I forget what was that commercial with the button? They had a button that did something I don't remember. How did you feel about that crazy bed in a box thing that I showed y'all? Oh, I was thinking what the like why? Why and how? Like, how is that possible? Well, I don't know if you've ever bought a bed. You probably haven't. Your folks yeah. have bought a plenty of beds. But you've got to go to the bed store, right? Yeah. Everything else is online in life right now. Like we could, I could order a kidney. You like gotta a, love the internet. I could order a human kidney, and the FedEx guy would be like, "Hey, what's going on? What's in there? Kidney? Ha <laughs> Jokester. Open it up, and there's a friggin' human kidney, right? You can order just about anything online. But when you go to buy a bed, and I like the the thought process, right? And they're memory foam mattresses, so memory foam is good. And finally, somebody decided to make one economical because all the other ones were super expensive. But so, worth but so, it. dude, it's like <laughs> sleeping on a cloud. It's awesome, and I think that's why I have a headache and why I'm like, why my head and neck and whatever from lifting a little bit, you know, doing some some different stuff, and just I've noticed I haven't been sleeping all that great. Like I it doesn't. And feel you good. haven't found time to buy coffee. For I, some I weird still reason. I still don't have coffee. I don't understand how that's possible. Well, because <laughs> I, I also went. Well, if I make it a couple days without coffee, maybe I'll just quit drinking coffee. Right. Because everyone says that coffee's good for you. It's bad for you and whatever. And, you know, uh, instead of drinking coffee, I just drink two, you know, two five hour energy. (laughs) No, I just drink two big like things of water in the morning. Right. Get enough fluid into your system and whatever, because coffee is a natural diuretic. Right. It also even though there's, you know, water in it, but it dehydrates your body. So what I've started doing is even when I drank coffee, I would drink two tall glasses of water and then drink my coffee just to make sure I was hydrated and whatever enough in the morning. So. If I leave coffee alone long enough, I can. But, dude, I'm much more productive when I get up and have, like... say, coffee wakes you up. Because you want to know what I did today before I came in here? Peed. I peed a bunch. 
and that's it. I took Scoop for a walk. I should have done laundry. I should have done whatever. I did nothing. There was a whole lot of nothing going on. You're so good at taking care of people, but you can't take care of yourself. Of course. Well, it, there's a there's a thing like they say mechanics always have a car at home that needs to be worked on, but that's what they do all day at work. Like a massage therapist, right? Massage therapists don't come home and give you back rubs, right? They do it all day for work. And it's it's funny because I read something a while ago of all these things and it's like uh you know, like when you date a stripper, your stripper doesn't dance for you at home. Right. She just looks pretty and you get to, you know, make sticky like normal, (laughs) but she doesn't like dance around for you. She's not going to entice you or whatever. And there was something about porn stars back in the day. Like, do porn stars have porn star sex when they're not being filmed? And they said no. Like there was a big rock star, the dude from Corn, who was dating like Tara Patrick, I think was her name. And they were like, oh, you know, everyone says and they did an interview and, and they were like, yeah. And she was like, no, no, no. Our sex is pretty basic yeah pretty basic and pretty 1950s <laughs> she was like that's all an act and stuff that i do on screen and whatever and you know this and this so it was, it's kind of weird so that does kind of fall in yes my whole job in life here is what can i do for you you come in you've got a problem with your and good job i'll give you the, give you the across the room face fist bump fixing old buddy's tank and whatever today <laughs> that was that was pretty neat like dude came in and thought his stuff was broken and whatever which is normally my job right which is normally my my thing where oh okay this and that and run him through whatever and he comes in and talks to you and yeah this is broke oh what's wrong with it let me see there you go it's fine so imagine that my whole job is to help somebody get the right thing that they want help them quit smoking do x y and z you know uh, worry about all this stuff when i go home dude i'm done worrying right it's, <laughs> you hey, don't care. i want to talk to my dog and you know and watch some TV or something. Is that right? why, like, when you break your stuff, you're just like, okay, fuck it. I'm buying a new one. <laughs> yeah. Because you don't want to fix it at home. Oh, yeah, I really don't. I really don't. Or why <laughs> Why I have multiple things at home that I can, you know, ah, this one's done. I've got this. There's always, like, one or two laying around. Oh, my gosh. So <laughs> it is It is kind of a weird, like, psychological thing that no matter what you do during the day, you don't want to do it when you get home, right? You've just spent your whole day doing it. And hopefully, if you're good at it, you did it a lot and you were really good at it. You don't want to do it when you go home. So I guess the goal is I shouldn't date a hooker, right? Because then she won't want to have sex. All she want to do is like talk and cuddle. That's why you get a prostitute. The same thing. <laughs> no. We had this conversation All yesterday. you got to do is give them money. <laughs> oh, that would be a great trick because all day long, all they do is get money for sex and they get home exactly. and they go, I don't want any money for sex. Cool. I'll save that money. And then you still get the sex. No, this is a good idea. That may be the best bit of wisdom I've ever I've ever <laughs> heard from you. This is good. Well, on that note, let me see what kind of time frame we're at. Yeah, we pulled 47, 47 minutes about nothing. What do you mean? We talked. To, we had a great conversation. No, we no about we. Pee. Yeah, no, we did. The, anyone? Yeah, if you feel that you <laughs> didn't get the proper amount of pee conversation, there's something wrong with you. It was a whole lot of talk <laughs> about pee. And you know what? Before we finish, before we finish. I've got another th- another pet peeve, and I'm sure I would have I'm sure I would have had it before I came in here. And this is something when you become an, like a full fledged adult. Like I know you got your card carrying member, you're 18, you can do stuff. But when you become a full fledged adult, you notice people, do, and you're a nice, caring enough person, right? Everyone will uh, you be hard pressed to find somebody who'd say you're not nice or you're not a nice, sweet person, right? Oh no, according to Michelle Jillian. And God knows who else. I am probably one of the biggest dicks that they're friends with for some weird reason. Uh, that's weird, dumb friend stuff and 19-year-old stuff. And it's girls, do I look fat in this? Do you want my honest opinion? Yes. Oh, you're a dick. Right? No. If you don't want the truth, don't. you can't handle the truth. Don't exactly ask the question. what I said. But when you go, like, it's weird. I go to a couple different places grocery shopping, right? So I'm like, oh, I go grocery shopping. And when I'm done grocery shopping and I put my stuff in my car, I take the cart and I push it in the little cart corral, right? And it drives me insane. Like when somebody's like in the line with you, like they're one over and you notice them, you're standing there waiting, right? So you notice the people and you look and you're like, okay, yeah, people, there's this, that seems like a normal person or whatever. They get out, they go to their car, you go to yours, you boom, 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 you're putting your stuff in. And when I turn to go take my cart away, this person just pushes the cart, just... (laughs) right by their car and then pulls out and i'm like in what world are you that busy 
that you can't like you do understand the carts are there for your use and whatever the least you could do is put it back in its proper friggin's place you know like we probably pay more for groceries because we got to pay kids to go pick them up right i've known a few kids who you know and i think i had that job when i was like 16 and i guess i noticed it then but but now i'm like i'm like wow dude like that's something or people who litter right like they you know smokers are really good at it right they and they just flick and i'm like so you just there's nowhere else you could have put that eh right or you'll see somebody with a wrapper and just throw it on the ground and i'm like wow like what who are you like do you do this at home like do you do whatever like what is wrong with you and the thing with the carts really really gets me because i've seen i've seen you know well-to-do people you know button up you know this and this and you know collared shirt people and i've seen you know hood people and i've seen grimy rednecks and whatever and i've seen all walks of earth of, of life do this i just don't know who i don't know why they think it's okay and it drives me insane the thing about smokers that i find hilarious is that like when they flick the end of their cigarette they're killing like so many birds because they see them as like bread and they would eat it and then die and i'm just like wow every time someone flicks i'm just like wow you're killing a bird. Congratulations. Yeah. Just in, and, and I don't know. I, I mean, this is a good public service announcement. Like, Hey, don't be a dick. Right. Maybe take your cigarette and put it somewhere. Right. Why? I mean, that is like littering one Oh one. Like who does this? Like when I go in my backyard and I see it, it drives me nuts. Like who was in, who, which one of my buddies were over there and just flicked their whatever. Like if I saw it, I would just cool. So I'm going to come over and just, you know, um, come over to your house. I'm going to open your front door. I'm just going to throw a napkin in, right? I'm going to take a wrapper of a fast food wrapper and, you know, <laughs> like we're sitting watching the TV and I'm just going to chuck it on your on your carpet. Dude, what are you doing? Why would you do such a thing? Oh, I don't know. It's cool. You can just throw stuff, you know, just throw stuff in my backyard. Like I'm not going to go out there and clean it at some point, right? So I don't know. It's just weird. I don't understand why people do that and I don't understand, you know, the thing. I almost want to, like, tell people, like, I don't uh, but yeah, littering I, is the secret to world peace because we're all together doing it. Not me. <laughs> not me. That's because you don't want peace. I want peace more than anything. <laughs> you guys are running this weird anarchy laden existence. Like if if I'm at a gas station, I use the gas station restroom and I'm like, oh, you know, dry my hands off and I throw the paper towel towards the thing and it goes boom, boom and falls out. I'm like, oh, like I'll even turn and take two steps away and I'm like, that's a dick move and I'll go pick it up and I'll throw it in its, <laughs> in its trash can or whatever. Because if you think about this, that somebody is coming after you, that's going to have to clean that bathroom. Right. And you go, Jesus kind of slobby ass. Like think about someone, you know, like dude, there's a trash can, put it in the trash can. Right. Now you throw it on the ground. Somebody's going to have, that's their job to go pick it up. And now you come in or their, their job isn't to pick it up. Their job is to empty the trash but you didn't put it in the trash. You put it on the ground. Now they're bending over and picking something off the ground. That's you're, what he said. You're, you're, um, you're basically making someone's, you know, day worse. So, you know, how big of a rush am I that I threw it over there and I had to run out of the bathroom, right? Just grab it, put it away. I don't know. It's, that's my, like, one thing that I try and do good for society, and I do it all by my lonesome in the, in the, in the crapper. But that's the thing, though. Like, people think of it more like, okay, they get paid to do that, except – they no, really don't. <laughs> they really don't. They get they get paid to empty the trash and maybe sweep the floor, but you're sweeping the floor for normal stuff, not for you being a dick and just throwing shit on the floor. So I don't know. Something one to grow on. Something to something to think about. <laughs> well, cool. I'm glad I made this through because I had the most annoying headache. My head feels a little bit better right now, but it could be because I'm sitting here and maybe I had a bunch of words stuck in my head that needed to to get out. So maybe I released I released the crack and I released the words. You just need to feel released. I, ain't that the truth, sister? And <laughs> on that note, this is the jakepodcast.com. Uh, check us out on, uh, you know, the click all content on YouTube. You can see everything. This one, hopefully I can get the other one edited from uh, from last night, which I thought was pretty Travis good. Travis won't do it. <sighs> Let's be real. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, he, he may. He's been good Travis lately. So we'll see if good Travis can pull uh, pull a rabbit out of his hat. But this is the Jake Podcast. Later. <laughs>